And we're not going to wait for the president to be elected or the council to be established, the president's council for solution. We as citizens, we the people are taking action now. We have established on the internet a place where citizens can connect with and learn about solutions now. And it's called citizensolutions.tv. You can go up on the internet now and that's it on the screen there. And it's the demonstration model, we're just getting it going. But you can go up and click on, I think we have 14 different videos now, what's working in energy, what's working in the environment and share that information with each other. And we hope to build on this demonstration model to turn it into a place for citizen to citizen exchange on what's working in America. So that's the bottom line. Instead of focusing on the breakdowns, let's focus on the breakthroughs. Instead of just focusing on the problems, let's focus on the solutions. This is how we as women can change the face of politics and government. This is how we can change our country. Create a way to connect the genius of the American citizens in with our government and identify and share our breakthrough solutions. So I invite you to go to citizensolutions.tv. When you're there, please click on the a link on the left that shows you how you can sign the petition for the President's Council for Solutions to show support for the, the concept. And it seems to me this idea of building on the best of what works is the key to making a better country and a better planet for all. We women have always risen to the challenges, from Abigail Adams to Rosa Parks, from Elizabeth Cady Stanton to Eleanor Roosevelt. We have stepped forward, and we need to do it now. We need to do it in this election. We need to mobilize. We need to vote on November 4th. We need a new president in the White House, and I personally am supporting Barack Obama for president. I was with 1,500 other great women yesterday to do it, including, by the way, Oprah Winfrey was there, and she never before had endorsed anybody. Oprah came out supporting Barack Obama, and what she said yesterday to us there in Chicago, with the great being that she is, Oprah said, it's time for us to mother a whole new world. It's time to bring forth a new life from our consciousness, to midwife the election to a new America. So let's bring change to the country we love. And as we do it, let's remember my namesake, Eleanor Roosevelt, who said, remember, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Thank you very much.
but I, I am concerned to make sure that there's nothing said in the laws that prevent women from having that access. That we have to fight to maintain. Would you say that these people are the wrong profession then if they can't perform all the duties that you would expect of a medical physician? Well, I, I would say that if you're running into someone who's refusing to fulfill those prescriptions, that you should find and patronize other places that recognize that that's a woman's right. Dr. Watt? Uh, I, I agree with what was said, but I think the key here for for all, all of us is, is organizing. I mean, you can have a very good point of view, but unless we organize across the country, um, we can't get it across to enough people. We need, we need lots and lots of people on this side in order to, uh, to win. So, uh, as some, I think Saul Alinsky or some famous organizer said, that the answer is organize, organize, organize. Spread your network and really intensively, and, uh, and, and, and I think we maybe can win some of these points. Yeah, and I would encourage also women to get into becoming pharmacists who have a commitment to that. Go in if you feel like this is something you want to make sure is available. Let's get in, and we've you know fled our people who agree with us to get in so we can make sure those prescriptions are always going to be filled. Hi, I'm Pat Shelley, and my question is about intentions for you, Eleanor, and particularly, um, I get a slight feeling of unease when I hear, you know, good intention or honorable intention or women's intention to build a, a better world because it it can sound agey and imprecise, and so I'd like you to um, expound a bit on that because uh, it sounds it, it's. In one sense, I take it as it's very practical, you know, state the intention, define the problem, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But um, to address this tinge of, of hesitancy uh, that I have about the word and intention. Thank you. Sure. Uh, thank you for that question. Well, when I think about stating the intention and then working towards it, I'm thinking, you know, the work that I've done for many years in strategic planning for the state of Massachusetts and for Boston Edison on energy efficiency and helping many other organizations over time. And to me, it's a practical matter of being clear about where you want to end up. So we always start with kind of, you know, what's your vision, what's your mission, what do things look like when you have succeeded in what you're trying to do. So get that picture. And it's been used with Stephen Covey in a very practical way in business. You know, the theme, Stephen Covey has the seven habits of successful people. And he says, you know, begin with the end in mind. So that's kind of how I think about it. If you begin with the end in mind, you have a clear picture of where you're heading. And then you can say, okay, this is where we want to be. This is where we are now. So what are the strategies that can get us there? What are some goals along the way that can show us that we're heading towards something. But if you don't begin with the end in mind, then you're kind of like, you get on the highway driving, and you could be going 70 miles an hour, but if you're not sure where you're headed, you're not sure you're going in the right direction or the wrong direction. So that's what, I, when I say your intention, that's what I talk about. Begin with the end of mind. And I think there's a real danger right now that we can get sucked into the problems with the economy, which are severe. Uh, uh, and everything else that's going on. And so I think it's vital that we keep that vision of where we want to head. And I, and I really believe it's a time to be dreaming big because the changes and the shifts that are happening are massive. And if we can be clear what kind of community or country or world we want, we can be advocating for that in this moment of transition. Um, I'm sorry, but I cannot have question that was prior to this last one. I think that uh, the woman's right to control her own body and her own and all the parts of it uh, is, is absolutely uh, the question of human, human rights, human dignity, and um, no one ought to have the power to interfere with that. 
especially, you know, someone who is not you know, based on, on religious on, uh, you know, beliefs. Um, the people who have ethical objections because of their religious beliefs should not be employed in for public service type of jobs. Thank you.